there! It's time for a good old mountaineering expedition. Oh, yo, Dustin, you're tongue out in between parts because it's going to be required that we go tongue boarding all across the ski lodge. Better wax your yeah. tongue, folks. I was going to say, yeah, that the, this is actually one of my favorite Wait, levels in terms of how straightforward it is. Uh, it's not exactly a collect-a-thon world so much as it is. Uh, this is, the, uh, this <laughs> is your uh, plot-mandated slidey level. Pretty much, and I mean, they built it. They do build it in such a way where, like, they kind of do. Ex assuming you decide to do this first, like, they do expect you to like make uh, frequent retrips if you want to go through all the other uh, courses. Yeah. Oh, okay. But otherwise, if you if you've been, if you've been uh, doing if you've pretty much been collecting everything else along the way and you come here last, you more or less have everything you need to clear this whole place out. Right. Uh, but yeah, just be, just yeah, again, just be wary because uh, each of these slopes will require a new uh, amount of uh, shiny things to go forward. Yep. <laughs> I do. I I do like even. Uh, that's one of my favorite things. I love how Ro I love how Roger is able to sound both pissed off yet he's not like peeking, like not screaming. It's just a perfect level of frustration to volume. Oh yeah, like he's a fantastic actor. Like it's not even just as Squidward, but in a lot of things I've seen him in. The only ones I think of, the only the only ones I can think of is Bugs Life in this. Well, uh, as far as Roger, well, he, he's also uh, the dad from Invader Zim. Yeah, don't oh. you remember him being Professor Membrane? He's the one who goes not scientifically possible. That is true. That's definitely not a voice I'd expect out of him, so I'll give him that. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, like it's like because I'm, 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 because again, the voice both here and in Bugs Life were both very nasally. Like a new sponge. Also, I also. Also, I know, totally knows Gary was pl was playing playing a little, little extra music on his end. Yeah. Yep. We'll, we'll deal with a that in just a person. moment. Soon as what I loveliness! Take care. Never mind. <laughs> he's dead now. And that kid we just goes up to him. He's like, "You jerk!" And just kicks him right in the shin. Exactly. You killed Flaky. So yeah, this now so I can actually. So, yeah. Now I can. Hi. I guess <laughs> that's that. Uh, okay, good, good, good contribution. Uh, but yes. So now, hopefully. Nice. Oh, there we go. Now, hopefully, uh, this will be a better uh, time to bring up the fact that yes, life is as extreme as you want to make it. Indeed. Because this is going to be the grand uh, surfboard and to end all surfboard. And as soon as I try and sneak my way up to some goodies, okay, I, I, I see now the path I was supposed to take. Well, no matter. Hey, Plankton. Hello, my most favorite friend in the whole world. Uh, didn't we just go, go over that? I'm technically your non-friend. Exactly. And because you're my favorite non-friend, that also qualifies you as being my favorite regular friend. It's all in the semantics, SpongeBob. Well, I guess I can't argue with that logic. Ah, <sighs> good times. I'm trying to remember some of my favorite... I'm trying to think of my favorite Plankton moments. I mean, he was fantastic in the movie. Like, any of the movies usually goes all... It, it's like... Some sort of switch gets flipped whenever it's the show, and then whenever it's the movie, where the voice actor just suddenly throws everything. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> something, just something somewhere, just gets flipped, and he's just suddenly told, "Yeah, don't hold anything back now. Just go ape shit." Well, he's also work. like that in the show sometimes as well. And funny thing is that, like, I'm sure we know it, but for the people that didn't know it. Plankton wasn't actually meant to be as reoccurring of a character as he was. He was meant to more or less be a one-time character. The only reason he kept coming back was because uh, Doug Lawrence, who's a voice actor, who also was a writer for the series, just loved just loved him. Aw, well that's actually... That's I mean, awesome. I guess... Because I guess... I mean, because I guess, yeah, the fact that he got scanned into a computer probably should have been a done deal, like he ain't getting out of there. But, uh... He never got his prize. I mean, I don't know, I just... I mean, I think it just—I think it just add fair. I think it just adds a nice dynamic of having like the have, having the Krusty Krab actually have some form of competition, albeit incredibly one-sided of a uh, rivalry as that is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I agree. All right. So where so the uh, Sand Mountain world itself. Well, if it isn't Sandy Cheese. Hello. Oh, don't sound too yeah, excited. So unfortunately, even though I think it's neat that so each of the. Uh, each of the characters has their own means of sliding. Patrick will slide up, will slide down on his back. Uh, Sandy actually has her shell board, but uh, despite all that, smash up his tongue. And I was like, despite all that, like I want to say, each of these missions really only wants SpongeBob. I think Larry wants Sandy, but yeah. In any case, I've gone down this hill a hundred times, usually rolling. Aww. Darn 
I almost read that as damn kids think it's funny to push me. Damn kids! I, let's let's be honest. Let's be honest here. If the show could get away with it, Mrs. Puff definitely would say that. Oh, that's right. I'm alone now. I can swear for real. Shut up! It, that would absolutely happen with that character. It totally head. would, especially with how how much more unhinged she got as the show went on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, she you know got what? unhinged as the show went on, but then I think in the current season, she actually got a little more compassionate and lovey-dovey. Well, dating uh, Mr. Krabs apparently darn, does that. Darn softened kids. Well, I mean, hey, hey. honestly, I, I'm all for it, considering I kind of started, I really think that after a while, I got real sick of Mrs. Puff's total ambivalence towards Spongebob. Yeah, and, uh, honestly, I, mean, I, I agree. Like, I can understand, like, an inst I can understand instances where she would be, like, a little annoyed from time to time, but they really played up how much she hated her in a lot of episodes. There was one where she actually oh, flat out wanted to kill him in a derby. Yeah, yeah. that one was kind of going too far. Yeah, yeah, that one was kind of going too far. That had to have been a later season episode, because I don't remember that. Yeah, it was. I, I want to say it was... Season. I want to say it was season six. Because that... Been. Okay, because I think... Because I think that's going way too far. I think she works best when she's just disgruntled because of trying to be the nice one, trying to be the now kid, now class. There are no dumb questions. Hey, Mrs. Puff, that's uh, a dumb question. <laughs> you didn't let him say something. Just it's a dumb question, isn't it? Whoa. <laughs> anyway, well, I just did there. That's Sand Mountain in a nutshell. Uh, there's two boards to ever. There's there's two. There's three. Uh, Slopes. Three slides, and each of them has like two little mechanics. One that'll lead to a secret, uh, and if you can also get down faster than the time limit, you will also get uh, a bonus golden spatula. So uh, that's really kind of it. So we just finished level one. Now there's just the next two after that. If only SpongeBob were as adept at uh, driving as he is with sliding. Yeah. 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 Well, apparently that isn't like an actual mandate that Hillenburg said that like SpongeBob is never allowed to get his license. And to be fair, that was and to be fair, that was admittedly done to pretty fun fun effect in one episode where like I forget what it was, but it involved Mr. Krabs and Plankton being a part of that whole test as well. All oh, right. And I then by the so end, right. and then SpongeBob's like, "Hey guys, I finished right," and the whole damn place explodes. Yeah. Boom. Oh. But yeah, again, I, and I'm fine with it. I think there's there, there's certain things that I think help lend to his character, like because understandably if you got rid of some of those things then you'd really lose a good chunk of like what what the show has to offer you know like I don't, i'm trying to think of how to describe it like oh oh i didn't know you slid down here hey, bubble buddy. but it's like it's like little things that like if you got rid of that then like you know if, if the journey has reached its end and you weren't ready to finish the show then it's going to seem very uh you know, awkward trying to continue forward from that point. Yeah. This, uh, this particular, bo this uh, particular slope, I should oh. say, is one of my is probably one of my least favorite because, essentially, you need to find each of the hidden sandmen on this course, and I believe you need to get them all in a single in a single lap. Right. Uh, this the box one to teleport up that resets them. Yeah. This is one of the uh, out of the three courses. This one is the most strict. And the part that makes it frustrating is that understandably as you can see with my current like predicament here there's no way of knowing where the sandmen are on your first time if you don't already know ahead of time with guy dang stuff like here's a sandman right here and there's no way to see that you know as you're going towards these forks in the road so it's a little bit of guesswork to tell mm -hmm. and make sure which which is the correct one you're going to and poor spongebob's tongue there yeah. uh, but calluses weren't made for no reason you screaming uh, for days head forward through here there you uh, go. Let me, uh, guys, let me know when you get to 9:30. Oh, sure. No worries, okay. no worries. One of the one of the other reasons. Yeah, again, don't worry. Like next game, James, you got that. You can do that one live. No problem. Yeah, that's the plan anyway. Alrighty, so yeah, 15 more seconds. Um, as soon as this happens, then I'll uh, go back to Doug and Jordy because I don't because I think it's we can talk a little bit more about the. Uh, Hang on a second. So five, so, four, four, three, three two, two, one, one play. play. Yay. There we go. So, Doug, Jordy, do I had to, well first I guess to Doug because uh, I th we talked we touched upon it briefly in the last part, but I didn't know fully. Uh, did you watch the SpongeBob show growing up? I did say, uh, I did watch it on demand stuff because we didn't get like uh, other programs that we get from, like, oh. uh, like like uh, Sky for example over here. 
The, all of the oh. stuff from SpongeBob for me and my aunt was on demand. Mm. Okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. Now I got that. Uh, then the other thing would be then uh, to you and Jordy then, because I think we talked a little bit about it briefly with James, but I guess I could also. I, I actually no, I don't think I asked this question to anybody. Gosh, dang it, that boulder again. You're fine. Um, no, just that boulder. <laughs> Um, do either of you have a favorite episode? Oh, favorite uh, SpongeBob? Mm -hmm. That's a good question, actually. I can say one of my favorite episodes is Graveyard Shift. I love the story of I love the story of the hash slinging slasher. That's pretty. That one was pretty fun. Um, I like me, that one too. I, go ahead. That's just it. But um, yeah, that's good. That's fair. Uh, I guess in my case, one that always sticks in my head, like more often than not. Uh, is, uh, I can't outright say it's my favorite episode of the given moment. I have to really dig deep to really think of, like, one that really does pull that, pull me, like, that I would consider my all-time favorite. But I, I'd say up there on that list is usually, uh, Frank's a lot. Oh, yeah, that was a fun one. Right. one. Host. Toast. That's a good one. Oh. Host! Um, I, um, <laughs> I like, I really, I really did enjoy pizza delivery. Oh, yeah, that's always a classic. Um, All right, here we go. Trying to think of, like, other ones, because I know there's a lot that I like. Um, Shanghai was pretty fun. Shanghai was I good. Uh, was something fun. Smells. Oh, something yeah, smells. Something Smells. Uh, do, you have any, do you have any, like, fun ones that you can that you can remember, Doug? Not to my head. No worries. I, n I remembered uh, when Joy brought that up, I remembered uh, one of my favorite things to look back on on the DVD collection side of things was... Um, on the, um, what's it, on the DVD featurette, uh, one of the things that you could find was it a, uh, it was, it was a full storyboard reading of the, uh, of, of the Graveyard Milo? Shift. Oh, Graveyard Shift, my dad. Oh, like, nice. the, of, like, the guy actually reading the whole thing. Like, not, not the actors, but someone else, but they, they did a really fun job with that. Mom, oh, yeah. Dad, I got to be million dollar! Oh, another good one I just remembered. Uh, can you spare a dime? Oh, yes! That oh, one was a was fun a one. I, I just it's love think, seeing like, Spongebob yeah. lose his shit because it's It's like one of the rare okay, few times where he loses his composure. Okay, that's the one I'm thinking. Actually, I just will actually yeah. no longer butter anything up for Squidward. Sorry, back to you, Hype. No, that's fine. I was just trying to remember if that was the episode I was thinking of. Um, let me see. One, another one that I like? Um, let me see. Uh, the Man Ray episode was pretty funny. Oh yeah, that where he good. goes, uh, uh, where he's trying to, you know, get out of the belt. Oh, it tickles, but it's worth it. Just start slamming Patrick. Oh, yeah. That was perfect. <laughs> what, what was the name of the actor who played Man Ray in that? Uh, John Reese Davis. Yeah, no, he did a fantastic. Yeah, he job. was, who was great. also, um, who was also a Kazim from Aladdin, King of Thieves. Oh really? Uh, oh, That's so cool. No. You know, I can, I, I can hear that in his deep voice. I, I can, I can. Uh, hear he, that he's a fantastic it. actor. I, I love hearing him and stuff. All right, the last one, the actual mountain of Sand Mountain. I'm the fastest there is. This does actually remind me, has anyone here ever played the SSX games? Uh, I've only played one uh, on tour, and that's for obvious reasons. Yeah, I know, I get you, I get you. Um, I remember play. I remember starting off with uh, SSX Tricky, um, mainly, through, mainly through my dad who had the game, and it was actually really fun because it was like, because they they would have these incredibly wild uh -huh. like snowboarding things like these really wild maps like there was a one that was it was essentially our Waluigi pinball before Waluigi pinball was a thing <laughs> but for snowboarding instead really wacky I loved it um, but th th this just reminded me of how one of my favorite uh, oops let's try that again uh, mm -hmm. it, it did remind me of how one of my favorite uh, oh. I'm so sorry sir oh. it did remind me of how one of my favorite um, games in the SSX franchise was SSX 3 because of the unique uh, approach they took to the whole game which was it actually was like a free ro it was sort of like a free roaming open world kind of game okay, where follow there was this there you go. where there where there was this massive Mount Everest kind of mountain and like you could basically start at either of the three different layers of the peaks and just snow downwards as long as you want but there would be like certain lodges uh, you know, like uh, cabins or little courses to stop at, like pit stops, and that would be how you would select your rivals and like different courses to race in to go up the ranks. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it just had a very neat approach to the whole to the whole game. Um, 
That and SSX Tricky was how I first was introduced to Run DMC. Uh huh. Because they used uh, that that song of theirs as the uh, the theme song. Hmm. Hmm. Anywho. Just yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, that's all fair to it. I just I never really had much of an interest in in those games. It, Same. Like, apart from the cameo. It's uh, yeah, apart from the cameo, which is probably I'll give them that. I'll give them this much. It was better handled than the uh, cameo that they did for NBA NBA Street V3. <laughs> where you're literally playing as oh, just right. you're playing as what well, may as well just be mask like literally literally three people in mascot costumes. Yeah, that, it's so that was uncanny. So oh, I guess to quickly clarify, SSX on tour was a was a Nintendo Wii SSX title. Uh, that GameCube, actually, GameCube. Oh, GameCube. Oh, I guess we but anyway. No, GameCube, GameCube. That uh, actually, uh, they I, I I guess they either collabed with Nintendo and oh Jesus, ow! My camera just hit me right in the face. They either collabed with Nintendo or recreated themselves, but actually had uh, Yoshi, Mario, Luigi, and Peach. As uh, a... no Yoshi, just Mario, and Luigi, and Peach. Oh, Yoshi? Right. Okay. Uh, exact same case as that basketball game. But at le but they actually looked like official models as opposed to the. Other. Uh, I think it's still the same models, but I think they did properly uh, uh, cha change the size of them as opposed to because I remember they looked so freaking huge in uh, NBA Street V3. Like again, yeah, they looked like they yeah. were just. Random character, like random uh, midgets in uh, in uh, costumes. Oh, you didn't go back for stretch Squidward? their models. Nah, I don't want. You don't, you're, you don't have to. Like those, all those. Um. Oh, Whoa. speaking of Squidward. Oh. See, there's Squidward right now. Yeah, I was about Welcome to say. Like, right I, I'm just surprised because, box. like, I was just about to say, I'm surprised because talking to Squidward after you're finished uh, had one of my favorite random scenes. Oh no! What did it, what did I miss? <laughs> Basically involved Squibbert skis and SpongeBob talking about like, oh Patrick borrowed your skis, and Squibbert's like, why does he need my skis? He doesn't even know how to ski. And it cuts to Patrick just in the middle of nowhere saying, I want the warp now. <laughs> oh. Oh no. Yeah, there we go. Now it's time for a second boss battle. Sorry, hi. Man, these Wait, CGI mean, graphics are amazing. Oh, they're not CG. They're real time. Oh, you know what I mean. I I know, I no, the, the redesign of Patrick I do like that like it looks you can see more of how it's metallic and also this song is actually one of my favorite uh, renditions from uh, the game just like the industrial park zone and how like eerie and like I, I just remember the tone of this boss feeling so un not unsettling but it, it felt it felt a little it felt a little haunting to me as a kid playing this little part That's yeah fun. But yeah, like, no, I, unlike, the unlike, the the unlike the Sandy Bot, unlike the Sandy Bot, I do think this is a genuine improvement on the original. And when Squidward's frozen there, he doesn't look nearly as uh, creepy. The only thing that I can that I can agree with the speedrunning community that I think is a bit uh, meh is that whenever it's time to hit the uh, Patrick robot, he always gets magnetized Dude. to the center of the arena. When he used to not do that, he used to just whenever it was time for him to stop, he would you know stop. Um, and oh no! Oh boy! Whoops! Yeah, the sponge the SpongeBob model was even worse when frozen. Yeah, right there. I mean, I, I like the look on it, and I will say also comparing to the original, I did kind of like Sandy's expression in the original as well because like w like she looked pissed when she saw SpongeBob frozen. She looked frozen. fucking unhinged. Oh, so this is not supposed to happen. Okay. Wait, uh, yeah, I, 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 there you go. Well, okay, I guess. Okay, I guess, I guess I take that back. Having the magnetized uh, thing does actually help there, but uh, beyond that, again, I I, I, I remember when it. Oh, geez. Oops. Yeah, here now, what we need to start doing is now his entire arena is going to start flooding, and this is what we're look this is what we're looking to do is because that goo is so hot and like you know seething acid. The idea is that we're going to trick him into continuously flooding this arena until it reaches up to where the boys are frozen. <laughs> that's sure. I'm sure that's not going to cause any sudden ramifications on their part. There you go. <sighs> so he's going to flood the second tier. There we go. Um, I guess I will say, uh, Doug, because I do want to involve you some more. Sorry, I want. I feel bad talking all the time. You're fine. Um, do you have a favorite of these like? remake projects of games from your childhood uh no not really from what it comes to mind oh like uh, like n not even stuff like uh, like crash insane or spyro reignite or so on i'm not really counting those two because i didn't grow up well spyro Ooh. somewhat but crash i fully played crash right when i turned 40. gotcha yes yeah, so i'm not counting 
No, for I've seen like with the, the original Spyro. I never grew up with the original. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, yeah. those were a little, uh, little. Uh, th those were like a little past your time. Well, 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 yeah. Before your but, time, you mean? Well, right, yeah. Whoa, whoa. But of course, I did know about the original PS One stuff because I was mostly a guy back then. That's fair. Is it like, true? Fair. Yeah. It's I also, mean, it's, it also kind of, the... it's also kind of funny because my my brother played the original Crash, and I was like. You didn't teach me this? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you betray me like this? But hey, I got Rayman. I know how much I like this. Yeah, that is There's true. That. Which, which I am curious if that one Rayman 2 HD fan project is still uh, is still something they're wanting to do or... I, I don't know are. why they wouldn't. I mean, like, it's not like Ubisoft's in a hurry to remake the games. Yeah. Watch that somehow oh. ends up. Watch us somehow Rayman makes an unexpected cameo in uh, the uh, this upcoming Ubisoft forward. Oh, I right, don't expect tomorrow, it to, it? but I would love that. I would cry. <laughs> I would cry. I would cry crocodile tears. Yeah. That would <laughs> nah, nah, real crocodile tears. tears. Un until uh, I mean, uh, in the meanwhile, we at least have Rayman Redemption. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's always that'll still that'll be always and forever be there unless Ubisoft decide to be pricks about it. I I'm surprised they haven't taken any action against it yet. I think because the because the, they know damn well they're gonna get a lot of flack if they do. Well, because or or, or because like I joked before that would require there. acknowledging Rayman exists Jeez, and they don't like whoa. doing that. Also, I could have sworn I heard him. I could have sworn I heard Patrick go oh, before he exploded. Oh yeah, he did. He did. Oh, yeah, no, he, he totally did. He doesn't say that, but he does. He does scream, and that also is what freaked me out at first when I first played this as a kid. Was that like the Sandy robot didn't even? Uh, why? Why? Did we need Nobody that needed to see that return. Yeah, I remember being a little freaked out by that when I first played it. Was uh, the game was that, that not that line, but that um, like the Sandy robot doesn't really make any sounds, but that one actually just suddenly just like screamed like actual Patrick was like, did I just kill a man? <laughs> Maybe Patrick was inside the robot all along, and we didn't know wow. about it until the very end. SpongeBob, why did you get my, SpongeBob? Why did you break my swimsuit? What's <laughs> your swimsuit? I SpongeBob. like to be proud of my figure. SpongeBob, I paid top dollar for that life support machine. What? Double damn it! How long was? <laughs> Jesus. Okay. On that note, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, we will see you all next time for the final tier of uh, Bikini Bottom, which features. Uh, uh, the very nice and cold pavement of the road. We'll just sleep on for whatever reason. Sounds good. Alrighty, welcome. Uh, get, get, get ready for the final uh, tier of episodes. Uh, tier of episodes. Final <laughs> tier of levels, everybody. Yay! Here's your lollipop. I ate a man alive today.